Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back to the lecture number five today. So in the earlier lecture, I have derived the conservation law or scalar conservation equation. And then I have given different example. And now I try to solve some of them example with the finite difference method. So let us uh, start finite. So I mentioned in the, in the first lecture that this is a classical method to solve the partial differential equation. I start with this finite difference method because uh, our mesh-free method is the generalized finite difference method. Therefore, if you understand little bit finite difference method, then we will generalize this method and we will then, therefore, this is uh, something like to get you a little bit basic knowledge of the numeric, it will not be much difference if we come to the mesh method. So consider now, consider the linear advection equation, del rho by del t, plus a del rho by del x is equal to 0 with initial condition rho 0 of or rho of 0 x is equal to so I consider now zero if minus two less equal to x less than zero sine of pi x if zero less than equal to x less equal to one zero if one less equal to x less equal to two because in numerical simulation we fix the domain so because we cannot take infinite domain and uh, what we have seen that the analytical solution This is with the method of characteristics, rho of tx, it was rho 0 of x0. If we solve the characteristic equation, dx by dt is equal to a with the initial condition x0 is equal to x0. This implies x of t is equal to x0 plus a of t, and this implies x0 is x of t minus a of t and now rho 0 and this x 0 is rho 0 of x minus a t and now if it is initial condition something like that then we may have like I will not write whole but we will have sine of pi x of 0 x minus a t so this will be the solution. It means that it is always constant. So whatever you start, this is like window function. 
whatever you start, it will move further. And now, so our domain omega is minus 2 to 2. Consider endpoints and divide omega by delta x is equal to it is 4 by n because minus 2 minus minus plus 2 is 4. This is the, the grid size. So we have domain here minus 2 to 2. So I put into many points here. So x1, x2, x of n. So our x of i is minus 2 plus i minus 1 times uh, delta x. I run from 1 to n plus 1. So these are the discrete grid points. And the row of xi, I define row of i is equal to row of xi, where i also run from 1 to n plus 1. So, what is uh, now, now, these are the discrete value. And uh, so, what is uh, the time? Uh, we need to do also the time integration here. Then we will have, we consider time step delta t so that t n discrete time step is n times delta t so n is equal to 0 1 further yeah until we go to the final time step and now what we need that so now we have to discretize rho with respect to time and rho with respect to delta x so we use a very naive approximation so naive approximation so what do we get here we get rho just explicit in the time integration rho n plus 1 minus rho of n by delta t is equal to plus now this a is a constant rho i plus 1 n minus rho i minus 1 of n by 2 delta x is equal to 0. So it means we can write explicitly rho here it is i rho of i n plus 1 is equal to this you can put on the right hand side rho of i n minus if it is on the this side so a times delta t it is coming up here to delta x times rho i plus 1 n minus rho i minus 1 of n. So this is our naive approximation. Now the question comes that this is just first order Euler explicit integration. But how do you get this one? Yeah. So in order to get this, let us start here. What is rho i plus 1? Rho i plus 1 is rho of x i plus delta x. So you use the Taylor expansion of this one around x i. So Taylor rho of x i plus delta x del rho by del x plus half delta x square del rho by del x square plus we have order of delta x the higher order term. If you take another one, rho i minus 1 is rho x i minus delta x. Again, Taylor, rho of x i, now it is minus 
delta x del rho y del x plus half delta x square del rho y del x square. Now it will be minus order of delta x q. Then here we have plus order of delta x 4. Here, since it is an even index here, so it will be the plus here delta x to the power 4. Now, when you subtract, yeah, if you subtract, what we get? Rho i plus 1 minus rho i minus 1 is equal to this you forget these two cancel so minus minus plus minus plus minus so what will happen these two cancel then we have 2 delta x del rho by del x so this also cancel here and what we get is that plus capital order of delta x q. Now, if you put it together, this implies del rho by del x is equal to rho i plus 1 minus rho i minus 1 by 2 delta x plus second order. Yeah. So, this derivative what I have derived here, it is just by the Taylor expansion. Now I have put over there, so del rho by del x is this part, and this is just the explicit Euler, and now we have the scheme. Now let us write this as uh, 5.1. So this is nothing else, this is called equation 5.1 as a naive or is called central difference scheme. So in all hyperbolic equations, so I do not go into the theory. If you look the stability analysis, all hyperbolic equations, they are not stable. So, so they are Unstable implies solution blows up after certain time. Then this when we do the coding, then we will see that how how the solution looks like, yeah. And but there is always a restriction is that we need to restrict uh, the basically the time step which is called the CFL condition. So, but it doesn't matter in this case, but uh, the time step is always restricted by because here delta t, you have to choose the time step. But anyway, this is not stable, doesn't matter, but still. We will need that one. The time step is uh, so since it is uh, it is explicit time step is uh, restricted by. CFL condition or number, it is a quorant condition. So it means CFL must be A times delta x by. Uh, delta t by delta x, this must be less than or equal to 1. So, CFL number cannot be larger than 1. If it is larger than 1, then we will have the problem. Now, what we do in order to avoid the instabilities, 
So what we have to do is that uh, to avoid of scheme, we need upwinding. So what is upwinding? So upwinding means that you follow the information where it is coming from. So if A is positive, so it means it is coming from left to right. If A is negative, suppose this is your domain. So if A is positive, so the information goes from left to right. If A is a negative, the information goes from right to left. So then you follow the, 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 of the direction of the flow. If A is positive, information comes from left side. This implies what we do that this derivative we just take the first order derivative. So then it means that we have rho i minus 1 is equal to rho of i minus delta x rho of x. So then it implies that our rho of x is equal to rho of i minus rho of i minus 1 by delta x. Yeah. So in this case our up our scheme looks like so it means that we are doing the approximation from left to right. Yeah. So this is uh, called backward formula. So our solution looks like now rho n plus 1 minus rho n by delta t plus a rho i n minus rho i minus 1 by delta x. So del rho by del x we put that one is equal to 0. So it implies rho n plus 1 is equal to rho n plus a, uh, sorry, is a minus, put it on the other side, a delta t by delta x, rho of i n minus rho of, so it's also a time level n, minus 1 n. Yeah? So this is uh, 5.2. So if it is other way, if a is negative, and then we take the other side, then we have a rho of x is rho i plus 1 minus rho of i by delta x and scheme is now rho of, so it is all our i here, rho of i n plus 1 is equal to rho of i n minus a delta t by delta x. So what we have here, rho of i plus 1, yeah, n minus rho of i n, that's all. That is equation 5.3. Now we just see that the numerical simulation, how it works, with the, the initial condition, uh, what I have uh, presented uh, before, yeah? Okay, let us uh, now implement uh, in the MATLAB our scheme which uh, we have developed. As I have already mentioned that I take my domain is minus 2 to 2. So here I just give uh, x minimum is minus 2, x maximum is 2. And then number of my point, uh, it can be just for example 100. So I define my delta x is um, x min minus x max minus x min by n. So in this case, it will be 4 by n. 
So this S is, uh, is used for other purpose. So the velocity at which it is a, now it is a constant, I define this one, and I run up to final time t is 0 0.3. And now I choose a CFL number because the CFL number should be less than 1. So for the safety, I have taken 0 0.5. So I therefore, with the help of CFL number, I take delta T is the CFL number times delta X by the absolute value of velocity because velocity can be negative or positive. Therefore, delta T should be always positive. Therefore, I have taken the absolute value. Now I just generate my XI. It is the same as uh, I have described in the, on the board. And now I, so this is my discrete point. And this is my uh, initial value in the discrete form. So then here I start the time loop. So when t is, I start t is equal to zero, and I run t is less equal to t final. Then I update my row new of i is just like in the equation 5.1. I have just written exactly what it is written here. Row of new i is equal to row of all i minus a times or velocity times delta t divided by 2 times delta x times the one which is inside the bracket. And then I just update my t as t plus delta t and I display the solution at every time step. Now let us see that how, then finally I just do, just uh, copy the old value as a new value. And I do the repetition until here t final. So let us see how the solution looks like. So here, so since A is positive, now you see that since I have already mentioned that all central difference scheme are not stable in the case of hyperbolic uh, law, whether it is linear or nonlinear, it doesn't matter. If you do the central difference scheme, they are not stable. Now here you again, uh, we run it. So it is now already getting oscillation. If I run a little bit longer, so it is 0 0.3. So just run like up to 0 0.5. Then what will happen? That it blow up. Yeah. So we cannot get the stable solution. So what will happen if I give the negative value? Yeah. If the velocity or a is in minus one, so the 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 wave should run to the left side. So now it goes to the left, but it's still again we have the oscillation. Yeah, it is the same as whether it is positive or negative. Now, in order to avoid this, uh, so one can think that if I decrease my delta t, yeah, so if I just take very small CFL number, what will happen? So now I am taking instead of 0 0.5, 0 0.1. So it is a little bit better, but again, what you see that, so let us run, yeah, so if it is a little bit longer after some time, now we get immediately here a little instability here, yeah, they start already the instabilities, and it doesn't matter whether we select the less time, small time step or not, with the fixed delta x. So now, if I take larger point, so maybe hope that if we take more point, like I take 400, which I had taken initially, what will happen? So with the 400 point, also let us see that the solution look more accurate, but after some time, so it is, uh, it will certainly get the oscillation. So it is still going because it is because of small, the time step is very small because the delta x is uh, small. But again now, you see slowly it is start the oscillation. So I think we have to run, the yeah, still is going on, the simulation. But we see a little bit here, the oscillation on the on the bottom and also here it is start uh, getting or a solution
So, if I run longer, now you already see on the bottom there is oscillation. Here also there is oscillation. So, if I run longer with this uh, small uh, delta x and delta t, finally, after some time, I will get the, the blow up of the solution. So, now we start in order to avoid these instabilities. Now, we do, as I mentioned, that some stable solution. Now, we check whether we take a positive A, what will happen? Whether we take negative A, what will happen? So, here now I go to the central disappearance scheme uh, with the upwinding. Now, again, so same setup as before, nothing changed. So, CFL number I have taken 0 0.5. So, everything same, initial value is initialized and same, nothing to be changed. So, only the difference is that here when we do the discretization, either we get 5.2 or 5.3. Now, if the velocity positive, so A is positive here, what we get is that 5.2. Yeah. So, we get the backward difference formula. So, here 5.2 say that the new of rho is equal to rho old minus A times or velocity times delta T divided by delta X plus the value on the, in the inside the bracket, rho i old minus rho i minus old. And then if it is negative, then we get equation 5.3, which is this else condition. Then other everything is fine, yeah? nothing to be changed. Now, in this case, I have plotted also the exact solution when at the final time, I have plotted the exact solution whether to see how it match or not. So let us start our simulation. So it is going to the right. And now what you see that at time t is equal to 1, we get this is the exact solution, which is the blue curve. And these points are the numerical solution. So here, if I take larger point, what will happen? Just take 200 point. We should have better solution. Yeah, it's getting better. Yeah, let us get 400 point. So if you increase the number of resolution, then finally you should get uh, close to the exact solution. Yeah, because with 100 was very less, uh, very poor resolution. Now with the 400 point. You see the solution is almost uh, numerical and analytical solution are almost same. Now we do with the negative velocity, what will happen? Now I put minus, yeah, it should automatically capture the phenomena. Now it should move to the left. So it is going to the left side and at final time what we get is exact and numerical solution. Now let us increase the time a little bit longer. The final time I take 1.0, it should run longer. So 0. I was a little bit short, but uh, let us start 1.0, but it should run forever. But for that, you have to extend the domain because it is constant along the characteristics. The solution doesn't change. So initial solution just moves, it shift. Shift with this, uh, so I have already done A minus uh, T. Now it is a little bit further, so it doesn't change much. So, let us make a little bit more 800 or 600 points. We still have a little bit uh, different. Because when the time is longer, then the solution between the numerical and exact solution is a little bit different because we accumulate the error and then at t is equal to 0 0.5, it was almost same, but at t is equal to 1, 
we saw a little bit discrepancy. Now I have increased instead of 400, 600. So the discrepancy on the top, what uh, we had, it should be smaller. Yeah. So that you can play, you can write your code uh, uh, by yourself and play a little bit with different delta t, different time, different uh, number of part, number of points, grid points. So it is uh, your exercise what you can do by yourself. So now you see that after t is equal to one with 400 points, we had little bit here difference between the exact and numeric solution. We still have on the bottom. So when we increase our number of grid point, we get better solution. But it still is better than the 400 because after t is equal to one, we have accumulated the error, and then there was a small discrepancy. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it is uh, since it is a first order. Of course, you can expect much uh, better solution. So you have to go to higher order in order to get the better solution. So I think now it is a time to stop uh, uh, this uh, this lecture today. Thank you very much.